Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. All right, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in on this station right here on the Sporting Journal Radio Network by downloading the podcast wherever you get your favorite podcasts or maybe you're watching this. Thank you very much. Make sure you uh, like this, uh, follow it, and uh, subscribe to us. If you like what you hear, share it with your friends. We appreciate that. So uh, last weekend, Dan and I were back with the, the, the rents, the family time for Easter, for Easter weekend. Well, we like to combine our holiday weekends with fishing. So we went down and fished Pool 4 down on the Mississippi. Uh, how did it go, Dan? Well, notice we haven't showed any pictures or <laughs> anything from it. Uh, yeah, so we'll just leave it at that. Man, it was tough and it was cold. And we had fished, we spent a couple of days on the rainy, of course, a couple of weeks ago for our 500 show party. And it was cold when we fished the rainy. It was colder fishing the Mississippi here last weekend when we were down there. I think it was 26 degrees when we launched. Too cold. Something like that. We should, it could have been ice fishing. I don't know. I didn't look at this. I, I feel I stay warmer if I don't look at the forecast. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if that's true. It's not true. Okay. Definitely not true. But we, we you know, and we fished and we fished and we were dragging jigs and Dan was running uh, Dubuque Rig whatever and some plastics and we're like gosh we should be trying some different presentations honestly it was so cold i didn't want to i didn't want to start i was just lazy like it was it was vacation weekend we were filming we did we had the camera gear out we were doing some filming and we probably should have been a little more flexible in our presentations but we were bouncing around and we weren't seeing anybody catch fish i don't know how many hours we spent on the river six seven hours something like that all day all day yeah and i think and it wasn't a ton of boats out there but there's there's enough boats that we were keeping an eye on all of them and didn't see any nuts coming out. I think we saw five total fish get caught on the river on Saturday, uh, two of them being catfish, so those don't count. But uh, we tried a new spot. We motored up the river, and we were just getting our gear out, and there was another boat there. And just as we pull up, we see the rod bend. We're like, oh, the guy next to us in the boat's got a fish. Ended up being a really nice one, so we pulled up, took some pictures, and I uh, got to know him. It was Tim Dumail who joins us right now. He's from Fine Line Outdoors. Happens to be a fishing guide down there, and it just happened to be a 28-and-a-half-inch walleye. And uh, he joins us to talk about that fish and more right now on the show. Tim, how's it going? It's going great. It's going great, Brad. How about you guys? Oh, not, not so bad. Uh, you had a better day on the river than we did. Yeah, I actually, before you guys pulled up, I had about a half a dozen fish that I caught. Um, and then w right when you guys pulled up, I got that big one. That was 28 and a half and pretty close to nine pounds, um, I would guess. I did not put it on the scale, but it was a dandy. And then, um, you know, and, and I believe looking at that one that it was spawned out. Um, it, it did not have the big giant belly like you usually see them big 26 to 30 inches. Um, you know, it took a couple of pictures, you know, you, you did that. And then we looked at her and said, she's got to go back in the water, you know, and she, if she's stressed out at all from spawn and that's, let's get her in the water and catch her again someday, Yeah, you know, and maybe next time she's going to be a 29 inch or 30 and she'll be 10, 12 pounds. So... Yep. You said that when we were looking at the fish, you thought it was spawned out already. I was surprised by that, Tim. Well, so previous in the day, too, I caught some, some nice eater fish, some saugers um, in the 17, 18-inch range. I caught one walleye about 16 inches, um, and they were males. Uh, but I did catch one sauger that was about 20 and a half, um, and looking at the fish, I'm like, okay, you have extra skin on your belly. Hmm. And if, if when, it, when I squeeze the belly, there were no egg sacs. Sure. So, um, like, I would be 99% sure that was a female and she was spawned out already. Sure. Um, you know, but for the most part right now, fishing's tough, um, like you guys saw. Um, the, the thing is, is we haven't had stable weather. The water temp has been going up and down and up and down. Um, we haven't had that much sun. And with the moon phase, the fish are spawning right now. And they are spawning hard. Hmm. Um, so they're a little more difficult to catch. I think that water temp was around 38 degrees, I think, when we were there that day. What Had you been on the river much? Did that, did that go down from what it was? Or what have the temperatures been doing? Yeah, it was. I had the spot you pulled up, we were about 40. Um, oh, yeah. That's right. And uh, literally about a month ago, five weeks ago, we had got to almost 41 degrees. Mm. And then we had a lot of runoff um, along with 
along with cold weathers at night. And what happened was the water temp actually went from 38 to 40 degrees down to um, 33. And um, oh. I, I fished some areas that I was like, you can graft these fish all day long. They're there. They're on the bottom. You get a jig down to the bottom. You pick it up. You're, you're picking up underneath them. Um, they're there. They just, they don't want to eat. They're all screwed up, you know? Um, and then it just starts getting, the water temp starts coming up a little bit more. It starts doing a little bit better. Um, but, but we still need the sunny days. You know, if you look outside kind of behind me right now and you get wherever you're at, it's cloudy, it's rainy. Um, tomorrow's supposed to be, you know, mid fifties and sun. So that should warm things up um 70 something months on saturday saturday right with a little chance of rain and windy of course which is fine it'll warm the water up um but then next week we're back into the 40s so you know the water will continue to warm now because of its color it's got some really good color to it um you can see about eight to ten inches down um but presentation right now is is a big key that, that i've been finding do you want to you talk know, about uh, what you were doing? Because you 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 were watching people drag jigs and not catching, so you were doing something a little bit different. You, you know, I started out in the morning at literally first light, and I was I like to catch them pitching. I like to pitch hair jigs. I like to pitch light plastics, um, and I like to catch them that way. I love to feel the little funk when they hit, you know. And um, I started out in the morning, I pitched a whole shoreline, I pitched up shallow, I pitched deep. These fish right now should be anywhere from, um, that big one I caught in 20 feet, um, but the other ones I got in like 16, 17, but the, the walleye should be in the three to four feet range, the, the five feet, you know? And um, so what I ended up doing is I never caught one at all, never even had a bite or a hit or anything pitching. And I moved out into some slack water and got into, uh, about 20 or about 17 to 20 feet and just held it vertical and when i talk about vertical um this is actually i think you can see it here i'll hold it by the hook um this is a jig that i was using when i caught that big one and it's just a 3 8 fireball jig and it's a plastic bait called a super do um this is a pro blue color one and th this is the best know nothing bait out there and when i mean no nothing i mean these legs that they have on there in the in the little skirt you get it down to the bottom and you pick it up and hold it three four inches and you don't do anything with it you don't jig it you don't move it um i've had so much better luck in the past and i will continue in the future to get the jig down to the bottom pick it up and hold it three inches off and you good graph you're going to see your jig down there um the less movement, the better most of the time. I mean, I know guys are throwing blade baits and they're, they're you know, moving baits and picking up pretty good. And, you know, they're catching a few here and there, but I will tell you day in and day out, I do better with just vertical jigging. You know, whether, whether we vertical jig something like this, which is, a, um, you know, a paddle tail. And what this does is you get to the bottom, you pick it up and hold it and that paddle tail wiggle, wiggle back and forth in the current. So, it's it's basically a do nothing bait um you also have you know your typical ringworms you know i like i like dragging these i like holding them um pitching them it, it all works good um these are the hair jigs this is one of my favorite colors blackhead purple bucktail and if you notice there's not a whole lot of bucktail on that yeah you don't need a lot hmm. if, if you have a bushy bucktail to me that's too much it makes it too buoyant um, I tie my own and, um, if they don't want to hit a bare bucktail, I'll put, I'll put like a Berkeley power minnow on it, power, uh, three inch power minnow. Um, I do not like to get, use live bait if I have to. I hate yeah. using minnows. Yeah. The reason I don't like using minnows is two reasons. One, I hate getting my hands wet. They get yeah. cold. Yeah. The second thing is I found out over the years of using live bait when it comes to the minnows is that a lot of times you're going to have those smaller fish that are going to hit the minnow and they're going to kill it or they're going to strip the side or they're going to break it or do something. And you have these little minnow, these little fish that are just hitting the minnows. Um, 
the plastic baits um, that like the Berkeley Power Minnow. This is one of my other favorite one. This is a three inch Kitek swim bait. It's on a three sixteenth gold head, um, vertical jigging, dragging. Um, really does well. Really, really does well. I gotta say, um, first of all, thank you. You know, as a guide, thank you for just coming on and like giving us all. You know, this is what I use. This is this is what I really like. And the best was when we pulled up next to you there, and we we're just kind of talking to you, and all of a sudden you just pitched that jig right into our boat. This is what I'm using. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. You go. It, 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 it brilliant know, you, accuracy, you, you, by the way, too. Three guys <laughs> and, a, and a really expensive camera in the boat, and you dropped it right right between all of us. Yeah. Well, I I'm a bass fisherman by like trade you could say um i love i love walleye and bass fishing it doesn't really matter uh, i fish a lot of bass tournaments over the years and uh traveled the country four years doing it yeah there's a smallie from malax um five five plus pounder yeah nice belly big fatty yeah yeah um but you know it i, I like to do education like when i go out and i take people out i i want to teach them what i've learned over the years you know, and if people want to know what I use, I, I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'll tell just about anybody what, what I'm using. And the reason being is you can have two people in the boat doing the same exact thing. Yeah. And if you're not in tune to what you're doing, you're not going to catch them. So, I mean, you have to be very specific on what you do. And I like to be able to educate people and say, this is how you do it. This is what I found that works really well. And there's so many times that, I might learn something from somebody else, um, a, a client, a friend, another guide that, um, you know, the more knowledge out there, the better, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, it, it's just, it's great. Um, yeah. You know, Absolutely. so it doesn't bother me to tell anybody what I'm using. I don't, I don't really care. No, we appreciate that. And you know, it was a cold day out there on the river and talk about not wanting to get your hands wet. like we pulled up and we were fishing up kind of by the dam down there and there was birds flying all over from gulls mm -hmm. to pelicans and cormorants and geese and ducks of course and yeah it was kind of cool and it was kind of slow so i was taking photos and some video of all these birds whipping around I'm like ah well at least we got something to watch and of course at one point when some of the birds flew over one of them inevitably pooped on me <laughs> of course while we were there and i didn't want to i didn't we didn't have a towel in the boat for some reason we forgot a towel i did not want to get my i just let it, i just left it on my jacket like i didn't want to put my hands <laughs> in the water there right now it's still there right now i didn't want to wash it off because i didn't want to get my my i didn't want to my oh. hands in the water or get my gloves wet because i knew it was going to be a right. long miserable day if i had wet gloves the rest of the day so yeah uh, no that's yeah, great that is. it was it was cold did you you fish you spent a lot of time on that river I, I fish i fish a lot i fish every weekend um and then some other days here and there um depends on when i have people that that you know clients that want to go out um but i fish all winter long unless it's below zero hmm. you know if it's cool. if it's anything above zero i'll at least go down and fish for a few hours you're talking about um, open water yep open water open go down water. usually put in an average resort because that that resort um the the chris down there does an awesome job of keeping the boat landing open um so that you can put in there any time he's a great guy if you're down there he'll he'll tell you what's going on what to do what to look for um what to use the whole nine yards you know he wants you to be successful and catch fish too and i i fish all winter long i like it because there's not a lot of people down there i can try different techniques i can hone in on things follow the movement of the fish things like that so it, it's a blast it's so interesting to hear you talk about not a lot of people down there because I have a love-hate relationship with the with the Mississippi and the St. Croix, honestly, for that matter. R river fishing near near the metro, and I know you're you're south of the metro there, the Twin Cities mm -hmm. metro, but it still feels a little bit like a lot of people come down there. Obviously, when the bite is hot or in the summertime, oh, yeah. they come down there and it gets gets pretty busy. I've 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 put in it, been a part of putting in at Everett's there, and, and had to walk a long ways from on top of the hill there and when we've done it it yep. hasn't even been that bad yeah right but uh um, yeah there's they have a chris has a new uh a field area up there that they park in and there you know you can get 50 boats up there easy mm -hmm. um and then he shuttles back and forth you know from the boat landing up and takes you up to your truck and then brings you back 
That's um, nice. The, the landings are always kept clear. He's got salt and sand on there so they don't ice up. He's got a bait shop so you can grab bait if you want minnows, if you want plastics, blade baits, jigs, whatever, snacks. You know, he's got everything right there. Um, so, but I like the I like the winter like you were talking about, Brad. I I like to go down there because like there's nobody there there's there's so many days i go down there and you know chris will text me and you know how you doing you know i see you're out there yep i'm there at uh you know an hour and a half before sunrise and i'm up fishing three to five feet of water you know and catching walleyes and there's not another boat in sight and there won't be anybody yeah well it's winter time people got ice fish in the winter time it's funny how you can have an open water opportunity like that and fishing can be really good but people once mm -hmm. once they can get their portable out or they can you know they can get their their snowmobile that that's got auger racks on it and everything you know it's all outfitted for for ice fishing that's what they want to do but then once the ice starts to deteriorate it's time for open water yep. and you hit the rivers and then and then jam those access it's like a a, a continuous cycle for anglers around here i feel right. like um but i think it's neat to be able to fish open water when there's snow on the banks i think that's a mm -hmm. kind of a it's not necessarily uniquely minnesotan thing to do but it's kind of a i i associate that with minnesota like you got to be pretty hardy to be open water <laughs> fishing when there's snow on the banks and your guides are, are freezing up and you know it's yep. not it's not easy fishing in those conditions no no it's not um the hardest thing for me is keep my hands warm yeah um you know i i I usually wear jersey gloves, you know, they're just the brown light jersey gloves. And if I really get cold, I'll put two pair on. Um, but a key that I bought over the last couple of years is, and you can see how bundled, bundled up I am in that picture. Um, you know, it was cold that day. The wind, mm -hmm. the wind was raw and, uh, but a heated vest. I, I bought one of those uh, lithium battery heat, heated vests. And they're Bluetooth with your phone, so you can change the temperature on them. Them things are, are the cat's meow. Interesting. I mean, it keeps your body warm. And I can't wait to use it for waterfall hunting this fall and deer hunting. Well, and I want to talk waterfall, but one more one more thing. Sure. Put that walleye picture back up, Dan, if you can. If you notice, you, it does look like she, her belly is a little bit loose right there. You can almost yep. she yep. almost looks like she is spawned out. So that that would make sense. Yeah, you can see my see my fingers in the belly, and I mean, th there's not much pressure there. And they're sunken up in there. And yeah. when I flip the fish over to look at it real quick, it like when after they spawn, if you flip them over, you can look and the bellies will be like sunk in in the middle. Um, and that's exactly the way that fish was. But, you know, great, healthy fish. You can tell by the picture that thing was extremely healthy. And, I mean, she creamed that jig. There, <laughs> there's just no two ways about it. I, I actually had to get a pliers to get it out because it was – down so far you couldn't even see it all right well um i wish you luck down there good luck with your net with your new dog when you get one and uh <laughs> yeah. if, if people want to jump in a boat with you how do they find you out there uh they can go to the website at uh, www.finelineoutdoors.com um that, that has all my contact information um has pictures has rates everything like that um follow me on facebook uh finelineoutdoors.com um and just go from there there you go, Fine Line Outdoors. What was that, Tim? Yeah. yeah, they can just shoot me an email. There's there's a contact page on the website, so they can get a hold of me there, too. Very good. Tim Dumail, appreciate the time here today on the show. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks for having me. It was great, guys. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. 852 million acres of public land. 147 million private properties. All in the palm of your hand. The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx.